Hello and welcome. In today's video, we'll be doing an introduction on the basics of fingerprinting and its uses, followed by an experiment. Hope you enjoy! Fingerprints are unique to every person. It is their individual identification, like a snowflake. Even identical twins with the same DNA will have different fingerprints. This is why we, we can use fingerprint identification as a tool to solve crimes. Fingerprints are ridges or papillary ridges that form unique patterns on the palms of your hands and soles of your feet. There are four main types. A whorl, which is one central circle that must at least make one complete turn. An arch, like a wave, the two sides meet in the middle where they spike up like a wave. A loop, where it starts on one side, loops around, and exits on the same side it started, but does not complete a circle. A composite, or a mix or combination of the three above. Then, the fingerprints begin to differ within their specified category from above using ridge characteristics. A fork occurs when a fingerprint line, which is a ridge, branches off from one and splits into two. An island is when a ridge is isolated by itself, not connected, and is much smaller than the rest, almost like a dot. An ending ridge is when, as it sounds, the ridge terminates. There are many pieces of evidence that can be investigated at a crime scene, like footprints, animal prints, blood samples, hair samples, tire tracks, etc. Fingerprints are important because nobody will have the same fingerprints as anyone else, but may have identical examples from the list above, losing its accuracy. The list above is also what's known as physical evidence, which is anything at the scene of the crime. Circumstantial evidence is evidence that involves an aspect of inferring. For instance, physical evidence would be that someone's fingerprints were found at the scene of the crime. Circumstantial evidence would be that considering they were the only other fingerprints besides the victim, they must have committed the crime. We are inferring that they did it based on the physical evidence. The unique ridges of your fingerprint contain sweat glands that produce oils. When the finger touches a surface, the oils are transferred in the shape and pattern of the fingerprint known as latent fingerprint and is invisible to the naked eye, but can be obtained through dusting. Dusting is a process of dusting fine powders over the fingerprint, and once it adheres to it, you lift the fingerprint with transparent tape. You would use dark powder on light surfaces and vice versa. Visible or patent fingerprints occur when the fingerprint is dipped into a substance and then that substance sticks to a surface in the shape of the fingerprint. So, for instance, if the finger was dipped in chalk and then the finger touched a piece of paper. Plastic fingerprints are left when the finger touches a malleable surface, which is something that can be squished and molded like wax. For the experiment, you will need a graphite pencil, transparent tape, and paper. What you will do first is draw and scratch your pencil on a section of the paper until it's very dark and concentrated. Then, rub a fingertip in the graphite mark gently and all over. Then, place the fingertip on the piece of tape and lift the tape. Place the transferred print on the tape onto the piece of paper and analyze its characteristics. Repeat these steps for each finger.